Hello, good evening, and welcome to episode three of On Ice Perspectives Live. My name is Jordan Cowan, and I am your host. Um, thank you so much for watching this, by the way. This has been my special little project to bring the skating community together while we're all distant, but I want it to also be this long-term thing that you guys can use to enjoy and meet and greet some of your favorite skaters, as well as some new ones. Speaking of which, my guests tonight are Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue. Hello, Maddie and Zach. Hi, Jordan. How's it going, Jordan? So thank you so much for being on the program. Um, I've known you guys what it feels like forever, um, but I haven't seen you since... I last filmed in Montreal, I think, in November. So yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Usually, we see you every six months maximum. Yeah. Um, and for most people, they probably don't know that Jordan and I used to live together. So back back in the days when we skated in Detroit. So it's been a long friendship. Definitely. And and Zach, you were there too. I was there off and on. Yeah, <laughs> that was about right when. When yeah, you guys started was, skating. When we first started skating together, yeah. Um, so, well, since I haven't seen you guys since November, that's going to be the most recent footage I have of you to play. But <laughs> that said, why don't we get started? Absolutely. Let's go, let's go. Okay, so we start <laughs> off with this beautiful shot of Zach's back. <laughs> <laughs> you know how long it took me to get black vests to be the staple of US figure skating? Yeah. <laughs> He requested that quite a few years. Every okay. year. <laughs> thank you to thank you to Ingrid at US Figure Skate. <laughs> and we've got oh, you guys man. warming up some edges. Yeah. Morning stroking class with Marie. Morning leg burn class with Marie. Yeah. yeah. It's not sometimes it's Patch, sometimes Ramon, sometimes Marie. It just depends. But mm -hmm. We've got some uh, greetings from people right now. Hola, ¿qué tal? <laughs> I like turns with Marie because she gets very animated. Like she really gets into it. You can yeah. even hear. Oh, we have uh, someone saying right. hi Call from Australia. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. Oh man, I like the first day we go back on the ice, I know my legs are going to burn so bad. I remember the first time we came to Montreal and it was like in the af off season and we did a stroking class with Patch and we just looked at each other after the first five minutes and we we're like, my legs oh, are no. dying. Yeah. We are in so much trouble. <laughs> and that was after skating like regular, not having two months off. Mm. So what have you guys been doing to keep busy and keep in shape and uh, everything? Yeah, a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like uh, our coaches are very well prepared. So I think we only took like a week or two weeks after the world's cancellation to get back into a routine. And uh, we've been utilizing a lot of Zoom. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, a couple hours with the with all the skaters from Montreal of different activities during the day and training what we can off the ice and choosing new programs and uh, yeah and then filling the time with a lot of ho new hobbies or mm -hmm. old hobbies that we didn't always really get Have into. Time for. Yeah. Oh what are some hobbies? Yeah. Oh man well I'm obsessed with plants right now. <laughs> Definitely we have 20 house plants at the moment. Oh, um, nice. I think we've, yeah. we've quadrupled our number of house plants too. Yeah, right? But not at and, 20 yet. Yeah. Okay, I'm almost 30. I still don't own my own house plant. <laughs> and um, other than that, there's uh, we've been doing, well, we do yoga with kefir, which is something I've always done. But uh, we started teaching classes together actually. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he teaches yoga. Every once in a while, I throw in some different things that I do also for warm up and cool down. And uh, we're teaching a class this Saturday, actually. So you can DM me or DM my brother on Instagram mm -hmm. to uh, find out more information. But 
I actually made the decision, ordered my books, so I start yoga teacher training within like the next week. So um, I'm going to use some time now to become certified yoga instructor. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's cool. Yes, okay. Zach didn't know that either. I had no clue, yeah. Yeah. Look at you. I oh. ordered eight books, and oh. there's a... <laughs> oh, it's a lot. It's a lot, and uh, it's been many years since I've studied something like that, so... Other than Spanish, so... Wow. Yeah. Nice. Well, if anyone's interested um, in emailing Kiefer or sending a direct message to Maddie for those yoga classes, the link is in the description. Awesome. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> um, Talib wants to know, how old are you guys? Here we go. Oh, man. We are both 29 years young. Nice. <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny. In skating, I, I feel like... Um, on the ice and like in my daily life, I feel quite young, um, but in recovery and athletic ability, 29 <laughs> feels like I'm getting up there. You got to stretch more. As we're like more. holding our bodies on the TV. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, some some of these clips um, you can see like that. I'm like shaking out my wrist because my wrist hurts, and he's like <laughs> rubbing his shoulder, and then it's like, okay, the music's on. We got to get back into character. I'm totally fine. So, um, <laughs> yeah, 29. It feels a little bit. You feel the wear and tear of all those years skating. Uh, I've I've got exactly a month left at 29. Yeah. <laughs> the big 3-0. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Don't be afraid of it. Um. Actually, <laughs> simply Venom asked, uh, "Do you guys already have a plan for when you guys step on step back onto the ice?" My goal is just to not fall on day one. If I can do yeah. that, <laughs> I'm like, I'm feel worried. Great? I feel like I'm in those <laughs> yeah. Games. No, I think I, you know, I think I have a, a good advantage that I can kind of help Zach and also help, you know, friends and loved ones at the rink. Um, and that's that I had a surgery and I was off the ice like four or five years ago. I was off the ice for about this amount of time, like close to three months. And, um, you're so anxious to get back on the ice. And the number one thing you have to do is like not get injured. And it's easy that when like, we've skated for so many years, like it's second nature. So the feeling will come back fast. I'm not worried about that, but I'm going to try and slow myself down because sometimes we can just get caught up in the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely the worst case scenario would be to wait all this time and then get injured. <laughs> and now we're just switching to later that day when we switched rinks. Yeah. Yeah, this is the yeah, rink. rink that, is yeah, we get to skate in every once in a while. It's um, from the Olympic Games in Montreal. And the Canadian speed skating team uh, usually trains there. So... Freestylers aren't allowed to really skate on that ice because they make holes, but they allow us every Wednesday afternoon to go there. And it's a the Olympic size where normally we don't have that. So it's a fun ring to skate. Ice glides so well. Oh, yeah. So well. And uh, I just remember like the first time I went there, our first year here, it's one of the only rinks Patch would put on his skate like every time we went. And he always glides, and like the first time he gets on the ice, I was behind him, and he looks up, and he's like, "Look at the lights! There's a big ring of lights." And so he looks down, and then he's like, "Wherever you're skating, the ring of lights follow you, and kind of like creates your own spotlight." So it's a cool ring. Wow. <laughs> when was uh, this? Was this when you came the last time, or was this earlier? Yeah, this was uh, I think the 27th of November. This was one one week before the final, and we couldn't figure out which direction our spin came out. <laughs> <laughs> no, so this is the mental hernia <laughs> that this friggin' exit of this spin. <laughs> how dizzy I was, and the yeah. amount of grief that I got for it. Let me just tell you that I've officially drawn the line. Of, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, we're supposed to be down there. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was yeah, that was the beginning of a run through. We're supposed to be run through. 
And it ha it wasn't the first time that we had done that mistake. So it was a little frustrating. I think this might have been the end of your run through. Or one of the pieces. Because you guys will do a run through and then you'll do sections after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trying to like up your I don't have cardio a long intake. Long, so this might be after it. Hmm. Spitfire Dragon asks, uh, how long have you been skating? Uh, I've been skating. Got me beat on that one. Yeah, I've been skating longer than Zach. I started when I was uh, about five years old. So. <laughs> <laughs> I started just, that wait, sliding what? move. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've been skating for almost 24 years now. Wow. Oh, I was going to ask you guys. Yeah, I... How does it feel to uh, glide on your knees at the end of your routine? It's okay. That ice doesn't like, look very smooth, does it? Yeah, right? <laughs> no, for sure, like, people have gotten injured. We've been lucky. Like, you get scrapes, it hurts. Uh, but the main thing is, like, we strategically put that one at the very end of the program. So when you lose speed, it's fine. But when you have to slide and then the ice is rough and you lose all your speed, you're just dreading the moment that you have to push hard to get get some more speed going again or often like the girls because we wear like very thin tights pantyhose and oh. we get cuts all over our legs and then they're bleeding and it kind of like ruins the aesthetic doesn't it a little bit i feel like it yeah. worked in the romeo and juliet program but this yeah. one not. <laughs> i don't see lady gaga or ally with like wounds on their legs but Maybe your knuckles. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> oh, I I label this one as just a great clip. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jordo. Oh, that's awesome. It's one of those, sometimes I get these sections from you guys. It's over 60 seconds long, and I just don't want to cut it for Instagram, so I just save it uh -huh. for a, a rainy day. <laughs> You don't like doing the uh, the longer TV ones, the series ones? Oh, I hate... I I mean, I'm not a very big fan of IGTV. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to beat YouTube, but... Um, it's, I don't think it can happen. They're just trying... They're still figuring yeah. it out. I'll wait till it's mature. I just like that most of the time if I want to post something. Like, on my regular page, it's usually at that 60-second mark. But mm -hmm. on my second page, it's usually about a five-minute video. And while I could go over and like drag it onto YouTube, which I may start doing, um, it's just way easier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so well, Sophia asked, "Do I have any practice footage from Romeo and Juliet too?" <laughs> and definitely, <laughs> definitely. I think a lot of I I think, a lot of cool shots. Yeah, Jordan's has like what two, three years of like solid footage. Three um, years, probably no. 2018 was when I really started filming yeah. skaters training. So three, three programs. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. Well, six programs, but three free <laughs> dance. Nice. Very cool. It's crazy. Like, you see us because you're watching, like, it's behind the lens. But the crazy thing is that we skate for, like, three and a half, four hours a day. But he's not only filming us, he's like filming everybody that day. So yeah. poor, poor Jordan is like following us. He's getting like very close. He's, you know, moving quite. There are like, times I'm like, like oh, I gotta push harder because he's yeah. right there. Especially that last shot on the twizzle and stuff. Like he's very close to us. Luckily we trust him a lot and he trusts <laughs> us, but he's skating around the rink from like Usually it's seven or nine in the morning, depending on the session, until like five p.m. And it's always like, oh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a break on the next session, and then he'll be in the <laughs> locker room, and then he'll be like, oh, Maddie and Evan, are you gonna skate next session? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, we're about to get on and do free dance. And then he's like, okay, I'll get back on. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you should take a break. And he's like, I'll eat something. And he takes like one bite of a sandwich, and then. Oh, it's and so not, fun though. I, it's the same thing when I'm editing. Sometimes, it's, 
you forget to eat and I know I'll eat when I get home like <laughs> I'm there on a trip and it's just it feels great to be there and usually you stay with me if it works out if I'm home yeah. because I mean we used to be roommates and I live right next to the rink mm -hmm. now now there's new bedding there's new bedding new decorations in here my mom made us new bedding so Aww. it'll be even more comfortable for next time you come this is basically Jordan's guest room because he comes here more <laughs> often than my family. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I don't know if you could hear you. You go in through. the middle of your twizzles. That's a pretty it's vocal guy. Yeah, it's not uncommon that he's making some sort of noise or remark. At least when I'm at the rink, that's like when my switch is fully on. My hair is like still a little bit pink and this video is making me miss how white blonde it was. <laughs> oh, this was a great clip too. It's just fun. I, I get so emotional when I'm filming you guys skating. Like I, I'm trying to move the camera to match how you're moving. Mm -hmm. And this is... You guys about to go into your lift, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was no. trying to get like the... Many a pair of pants was cut doing this lift. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Why not? How long does it take for you to do that and for it not to be distractingly painful? Honestly, it doesn't... I mean, if I wasn't holding onto her leg, maybe it would hurt more because like a blade is only so wide. But honestly, the second you have an arm on her standing leg, like... I don't even feel it. especially when I think like in this program I wear jeans mm -hmm. like if I can fall off a dirt bike and not feel it wearing jeans I'm not gonna be okay with someone standing on me and the fin step back to the fin step this season so you'll have even yeah. more chances to get oh boy the perfect oh. fin step it's so short that's my only yeah. disappointment well, I'd rather it be short than have to do this that second side. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Key point wise, it would have been a nightmare. Oh, guys, this is uh, your rhythm dance run through. Oh, wow. <laughs> was it a good one? I think it was a good one. That's why I put it in. <laughs> it's funny. I, think I did some ad libbing there. We. <laughs> have a tendency to change little things about our programs very often. So basically every competition is different. And actually we have no video of the versions that we were meant to compete at world because oh. you weren't there, you couldn't come yet, you there. and we had changed stuff and like a big changes, especially in the free dance. So it's just weird to like look back and see like this, which was two versions away from the end of the season and be like, Oh, right. Okay. Like, think I know what's coming next, and then it's something different. <laughs> oh, Sophia asked a good question. What would you want the pattern to be for the next Olympics? Oh, that's a good pattern question. Pattern dance. Um, I really like the Midnight Blues. Mm -hmm. Fun yeah. dance. Um, what other dances do I really like? I do like the Ravensburger, but I think it would be fun to see. I, I feel the Blues lends itself to more styles and um yeah waltz is a little bit limiting in a way yeah. the discussion so far has been that um their plan originally was to make the rhythm dance for olympic season uh hip-hop mixed with something else so hip-hop in like any variety lyrical hip-hop um more like funk hip-hop um lots of different iterations of it and so i think that would mix really well it's what we did last time we did hip hop, but I think mm -hmm. that dance, like there's a lot of style and we could even do maybe the other half of that dance. That would be cool. Cause we d did the first half of the blues, but not the yeah, second. Yeah, the second half of the, like mm -hmm. the second half of all of the ones when they split them up is always <laughs> the cooler part as a skater, I think. It's more challenging that I had that part. I think there's like a lot of strange turns and a really challenging dip. So I think it could be pretty cool. 
The other dance that hasn't been done in international competition in a long time is the Austrian waltz. And it's actually one of my favorites. I think it's also I've never difficult. done it. It's I think it's probably the most difficult compulsory. Like Which is funny is because skinny. it's always been a junior level international dance. But really? like learning it, I was like, dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> that there's so many changes of hold, so much difficult partnering, reverse tracking, crazy cross behind change of edge that like, it's it's a really fun dance. Yeah, you're right. It was a pretty good run through. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't look satisfied though. <laughs> do you but be honest, do you ever feel satisfied after no. a run through? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's it's tough. Like that's one thing that I definitely want to learn because it's been a long time since I took this amount of time off of the sport and we all want to be a perfectionist like we all strive to do better but there's always going to be like another vision or another idea that comes in your head and that's great like you should be excited about that you know that you're always finding new things that could make it better but then like don't belittle the thing that you're doing and so often like I see these videos that you've taken and my impression is like especially now I've I have some distance from it and I think oh wow, that was that was good I liked a lot of things about that and almost every clip, even when it was like a successful attempt at something or successful um, element, if there's no negative reaction, there's almost like no reaction. We just like walk away and we're just mm -hmm. like, oh, that's normal. <laughs> so it's definitely like something I think that applies to all of life, right? It's just like celebrating the things that become automatic. Like how lucky we are that I spent 25 years skating and now it's automatic for me to skate like that and twizzle and lift and do all those things that are like really, really unique and really cool. But, you know, got to appreciate yourself. So that's why we always love like Jordan comes and especially when you, you come before a competition, because first it can take off the stress a little bit and you're always so vocal about being like, wow, that was great. Or that was a great clip. Or you get excited about a video and you like show us on the ice. <laughs> and it's always good to have, like, a friend just come and be, like, impressed with what you're doing, and, yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is such a great clip of your midline step sequence. Okay, Jordan, can you send this to me? I want to post it when we're done with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I actually really love this clip. The camera angles are great. So much speed. So and much. there's a wall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> also, where did you get that shirt from? The one in the video? Yeah. So, um, that's actually from Lulu. No way. And Lululemon. It's yeah. from, yeah, Lululemon. It's from the Westmount store here. And it's funny because there's a young guy that works there. And if you order Lulu online, they have a like ridiculous amount of patterns and design that you can't get in just in store most of the time unless it's a return and this guy always gets them in my side so i go in once in a while and i would, and I would just be like okay i'm, I'm like, sorry but I just you know patch <laughs> i just i miss patch that's all patch and his corrections ah uh, yeah the good old days <laughs> Um, Peter Murray asks, uh, what has, I think we can kind of understand what he said. What has all this time off presented you with the most difficulties, most serious challenges? <laughs> you know, I, I consider myself pretty fortunate. Um, I haven't had that many challenges. Montreal has been um, pretty, pretty open. Like there's, we can still go out and walk our dog and, uh, you know, do what we need to do. Um the main challenge I think for me and that I foresee being kind of even longer term is just not being able to travel to see family. Uh, both Adrian and I are away from family and this is kind of usually the time that we are able to go and see them. And it's also the time that we're able to work because <laughs> you know like skating yeah. is a, a great thing we're funded by our government 
and by U.S. Figure Skating and the Olympic Committee. Like, it all comes through to help us pay for our skating. But we supplement all of that in order to live. And, like, we don't make enough money out of skating to pay for our whole life. We we make money by doing shows. So, um, the like, there will be, I don't think any, sh- there won't be any shows for, like, a quite a while. I, I'm not sure when things will get back to normal. Um, that's part of also why I've decided, like, to prepare myself for the rest of life also with a yoga certification like I can teach yoga online and I can teach yoga from a distance if need be and um skating you really can't I can't I can't give somebody an ice show um other than like watching this this is like amazing but um yeah that's I guess the biggest challenge is like we we don't have that income of all the ice shows that we generally do and we don't know when we'll be able to see family because like Adrian can go back to Spain now, but he won't be allowed back to Canada. So it's not worth the risk when the Olympics are so close for him to go back and then not be able to come back and train. And it's the same for me. Like we're not a hundred percent sure when it will be fine to, to co- travel back and forth and how picky they'll be once it opens. Oh, speaking oh, of Adrian. I just put that in there for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. My favorite part. It's Aww. that darn door. <laughs> yeah. Adrian really likes getting close to the boards when he's safe. Not the first time. <laughs> All right. This is our last clip, you guys. <laughs> From November. Nice. Oh, this was such a smooth take of the fin step. But you know, I guess I, I guess I can do a closer one. Yeah. <laughs> this next season. Yeah, you might have to. Oh, you gotta step it up. Oh, and little boogie woogie, that's cute. Wow. And I just I'm walk away. <laughs> yeah, it's about what you'd watch if you came to see our practice. Yeah. <sighs> nice. Well, awesome. Great clips, Jordan. Thank you. Yeah, honestly, dude, what you do is so amazing. Such great quality, and the fact that you can do it for ten hours a day is <laughs> beyond me. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm always about. I'm I love the prep. I love filming. It's the editing that always like makes me sad because I just want to get out and film some more. So I'm oh. glad to like share basically this raw footage with you guys, and and we can just yeah. sit and watch and enjoy it. And that's the point of it. Nice. Right on. Very yeah. cool. And you know, I it, this is the time of year we'd be in Stars on Ice and doing shows. So this, I hope, in a way, is a a way for people to enjoy you guys watching you guys skate. You know, very cool. Yeah, let people connect with us and us with them and us with you as well. Yeah, yeah, it's given me a great a great opportunity to connect with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. think um, if we have any more quick maybe we'll do like two minutes of questions if you guys are all yeah, right yeah of course yeah, yeah. Sure. um here's the most recent one valentine asks what tip would you share with everyone to stay calm during this time mm-hmm. that's so individual but um i would just find something that feels like a really mm, calming activity that kind of puts you in that place where you don't really notice time pass you're not thinking about other things um, I have many of those activities. Uh, some of them are physical and then some of them are like, um, I really like journaling, but like, even when I'm not particularly writing anything important, but like the kind of journaling that you take a book and then you create with like stickers and washi tape and markers, and then you <laughs> write down things that don't need to be written down. They're already there and you can remember them. But like just that kind of like ritual of like doodling things. I woke up at this time and I... You know, that, that makes me feel calm and it's something that I can just sit and do for like an hour or two hours. And it like, it's almost like med- uh, meditation without having to be good at meditation. How about you? Yeah, I think it's really important. Uh, well, just adding on to that, I think it's super important that you actually have some sort of way of emptying yourself. Like for Maddie, it's writing down. For me, it's music and singing and writing, writing music or going out and tinkering with the bike. But it's like a way 
especially while right now all of us are cooped up. Mm -hmm. Mostly, the the biggest problem is that we're cooped up with ourselves. There's nothing to distract from whatever we've been using in the, our lives to distract us from. So, like, especially me, I can sit down and just think and think and think myself into like a whirlpool, right? just a spinning drain. So, I, I found that it's super important to just have that kind of outlet. I like that Maddie writes because she always ends up writing this really cool stuff or she comes up with cool concepts. For, <laughs> like I said, for me, it, it's music or, or songs or things like that. And just you learn a lot about yourself when you can sit there and read it back to yourself. You you understand whether what you feel is true or not, whether you're lying to yourself, whether there's a new discovery to be found in what you wrote down. Like uh, once I started journaling, it took me so long. But Maddie was like, you should just write things down. And then her mom and would always doodle. She'd always doodle. So now I have like somewhere over here, I've got like a collection of like 14 books that I'm filling up. And it's, it's that, it's, it's super freeing. Like, wow. and you learn so much. Just have a conversation with yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. I've, so as I've been practicing this live stream, I will like go on these unlisted lives by myself and I'm just mm -hmm. like talking my thoughts out. And it's been, <laughs> I feel weird because I'm like, oh, he's, I'm just talking to myself now. Um, but I've never done that before. And mm -hmm. it's been quite refreshing to just realize what I was thinking when you say it out verbally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if he asks, how, how often do, um, do ice dance teams run into each other during practice? <laughs> you know, <laughs> not that often, honestly. No, there's like a couple teams, maybe, right? But like, how often in, in training compared to competition? It's much more likely oh. to happen in competition than it is if in training. Hmm. If you're talking about really like running into each other, like we didn't almost run into each other, then yeah, it's, it's pretty rare. But um, it feels like basically we all get in a groove, especially like us, we train with the same teams all the time. So like you'll go weeks without anything. And then it seems like all of a sudden, all at once, there's like some mojo in the air. <laughs> and you're the team that gets in somebody's way like four times in one practice or you get in somebody's run through like and then you feel so bad um but for the most part we're also like very verbal so like that lift that was just playing like if I'm going into that lift and I see anybody near me I'm going to scream because <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be good for either of us if we run into somebody so yeah, I think being in a couple makes you a bit more cautious. It, although it's funny because like I've trained as pair skaters, and I've trained pair skaters like it's it's not the same thing. I think the guys get so focused because they're about to launch a girl 100 feet in the air. But hmm. um, like watching practice as a competition, the ice dancers are really the only ones that say anything. And you watch the freestylers get like, you're just like, really? You, yeah. you, 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 your ego's that big? You're gonna risk a collision there? Other disciplines hate training with ice dancers because our patterns are so unpredictable and we come so <laughs> close to the to the boards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, we don't just go. Yeah, it's hard to. I mean, I, I it happens to me all the time when I'm filming. I'm like, um, and that's why I don't even try sometimes. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna have room to go around you guys uh, yeah. between you and the boards. I'd yeah. rather <laughs> take the inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's rarely that skaters like go right through the middle of the ice. Um, and you know, this might, it's been a while since you guys have been able to coach like back in Detroit skating mm -hmm. club, but, uh, Jaslyn asks, can you start skating from the age of 15? Because some say it's too late. Well, I mean, I started technically at 11 with learn to skate. And when I started actually skating, I was 15. So I touched the ice at a young age, like 11. Maddie, I think we started what, four, five, five and a half, five. Yeah. But I think it, de it depends on your level of determination. And I mean, there's an innate level of talent needed to be elite at anything for sure. But to start skating at any age, no. To become successful at it, absolutely mm -hmm. not. To find joy at it, absolutely not. To compete yeah. in it, absolutely not. There's no limit really on what you can do that you don't set for yourself. Yeah. Maddie, you're not allowed to use it against me in training, by the way. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the thing. Like, um, are the odds st stacked against you starting at 15? For sure. Like, there are kids that are winning senior Grand Prix at 15. Like, and that's just the fact. Um, you're starting later than them. Um, but everybody has different circumstances. And, uh, like, something always seems 
un, unachievable until that person does it and they become like a success story and they become the person everybody talks about. And then that's the new standard of the most amazing thing you can do, but you can't possibly do it one year later, you know? So if you have a passion for it and an interest in it, give it a try, see if you really enjoy it. Definitely. I wouldn't go for anything that you don't like absolutely love because to, to get to a really elite level of, of whatever you choose takes an incredible amount of uh, effort, even on the days that you don't always feel like it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Last question. I think my internet dropped out there for a second, but it's catching mm -hmm. up. Okay. Um, <laughs> Maria Martinova asks the big question, are you keeping your rhythm dance next season? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. right. Everyone um, think, loves to ask these questions thinking yeah. we're just gonna spill all the beans. Right. Can we give them any hints? I don't know. With, with short, with a plan, it's kind of hard. Like, one hint just kind of leads to a sort of semi obvious. Um, yes or I'll no say question. that it has the same rhythms inside of it because you could choose many rhythms disco or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. So, I know that the one we'll be competing next year has the same rhythms, which is like slow slow swing and quick step um okay. i'll be wearing a lot of rhinestones fabulous <laughs> fabulous so we'll see well um i think that's all the time we have for tonight i can see it's getting really dark where you are it's been I know, dark right? where i am for a while i know i'm like looking around like crud i don't have a light up here <laughs> yeah i have no lamps in this room so great <laughs> um i can't thank you guys enough um it's always a pleasure seeing you talking to you watching you skate and now we have you you know talking about watching you skate <laughs> um i can't wait to do this with you guys again either some okay. stars on ice footage or stuff from the 2018 season um uh, for now though i wish everybody uh safety and health and we will see you next time thank you so much jordan thanks jordan Great. Have a great night, everyone. Good Thanks night. Thanks for watching. Thanks, <laughs>